This building behind me used to be a Catholic school for wayward girls. Now it's the Good Shepherd Center, part of Wallingford's Meridian Park Playground, and home to uh, several nonprofits, a community garden, as well as affordable housing for artists. Recently, a home seller client of mine contacted me and asked me if there was a way I could figure out how to protect her home from being developed when it came time to sell. This put me in touch with the historic Wallingford organization, where I was able to track down the history of one of Seattle's most beloved neighborhoods. Wallingford was first settled in 1876 on unceded land that was home to the Coast Salish people, namely the Duwamish. The first settling families were the Day, Bowman, Stone, and Ashworth families. And the Ashworth property was said to be visited by native fishermen on a regular basis. The first non-farm residence was built 10 years later, and that was the beginning of Wallingford's housing boom. Later, a real estate speculator by the name of John Noble Wallingford Jr. bought the land east of Woodland Park, bestowed his name upon the community, and it was later annexed to become part of the city of Seattle. If you're looking through the inventory of homes in this neighborhood, you'll find that almost every home was built around the early 1900s before 1910. You'll be hard pressed to find any home that was built before 1900, except for two homes, one in Fremont and one over in Green Lake. So what caused the housing boom in the early 1900s here in Wallingford? Well, the main thing was a sudden boom in transportation accessibility. In 1885, the first canal was dug that connected Lake Washington to the Puget Sound. Around this time, the first bloom of floating home communities was also created. When it comes to prohibition, the speakeasies in this city used to be on floating homes, made it harder for the police to find out where the alcohol was being drank. And one of the main proponents of prohibition in that time was John Noble Wallingford Jr.'s daughter. Shortly after the canal was dug, the Lakeshore and Eastern Railway Company built a railway that connected Seattle to the highly populated East Coast. And both of these instances grew the industry around the north side of Lake Union. The wooden Latona Bridge underneath what would later be I-5 helped start David T. Denny's Streetcar Railway that connected Seattle to the Wallingford neighborhood. Back then it was known as a streetcar suburb. The next thing up was the creation of the gas works. When the Seattle Gas Light Company sought to create a synthetic gas, an alternative to what they were doing at the time, which was burning beef fat for light and energy. And they needed a lot of water, so they bought a chunk of land on the north side of Lake Union called Browns Point and built the gas works. There's basically nothing left of the original plant save for this trestle right here, due to the fact that they ripped it down and rebuilt it when they started to refine petroleum instead of the synthetic gas. But if you know where to look, you can see some evidence of the old plant as well. Another historic event that caused a massive housing boom here in Wallingford was the relocation of the University of Washington campus from downtown to where it is now, as well as the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition in 1909, which brought a ton of people to the area and finalized the housing boom. Well, let me take this time to explain to you why Wallingford is such a great place to live. Its central location, which is what caused it to become such a booming neighborhood in the first place, still rings true to this very day. Its proximity to I-5 and 99 gives access routes all over the city, and its central location has caused a thriving commercial industry as well. We're looking at restaurants, bars, tons of different kinds of housing. We've got apartments, condos, single family homes, some old, some brand new, and anything you'd ever want is right here in Wallingford. And that about wraps up the uh, housing boom in the early 1900s of the Wallingford neighborhood of Seattle. Uh, I'm Tyson Beatty, real estate broker with John L. Scott, and it's been a pleasure to bring this information to you today. If you can think of another neighborhood, let me know in the comments and share this video with a friend if you liked it or click like, it'll help me uh, and inspire me to make more. Thanks a lot.